Hello and welcome back to the Ten Born. I'm Pragmatic Lee, and in today's video, we're going to continue on a little bit more in the threading series uh, that I started back around the first of the year. I said in the last video that that was probably going to be the last one in this series of threading on uh, import lathes, but I got to thinking about uh, a series on uh, threading, especially on an import lathe, uh, imperial lathe would not be complete without a couple of videos on metric threading. So today we're going to uh, do an external metric thread. Now many of you have probably seen videos uh, on YouTube and maybe even uh, uh, watched it in person, but threading a uh, metric on an imperial lathe usually means leaving the uh, half nuts engaged. And that's what we're going to do uh, on this. You've only got one thing to keep your mind on and that's hitting that uh, stop switch uh, when you get to the end of your cut. But another thing I want to look at in today's video is something you don't see much uh, or talked about much in the other videos dealing with uh, metric threading and that is how far to advance your compound and how to calculate that. Remember in previous videos on internal and external threading, uh, and even on the one we did uh, last week on matching a non-nominal thread, I used the constant 750 divided by the threads per inch to give how much movement uh, or travel on the compound to get to your de uh, thread depth. A uh, little bit different calculation to do that on the uh, imperial lathe. Uh, again, the dials are, are in imperial while we're dealing with metric threading. So let's turn to the lathe first and, and machine us a workpiece. What I'm going to be doing, this is a 16 millimeter, 16 by 2 pitch, meaning the, uh, the distance between the threads is 2 millimeters. We're going to turn this piece of hex stock down and thread it to match this nut. Now this is simply a, a piece of old crowbar, pry bar, that I had. The, uh, it was broke, uh, the claws on it were broke off. So I cut it off and it's actually pretty good working material. And I decided I'd use that just to, uh, just to use up some of this material. So let's turn to the lathe now and turn this down to our 16 millimeter. Okay, I've got that piece of hex stock loaded in the uh, in the chuck on the lathe now, and I think we're gonna maybe cut about three quarters of an inch. So I'll just put me a little witness mark here. Okay, that uh, cleaned up around <clears throat> 16 millimeter equates to uh, 630 thousandths. It's 713. So we'll set up our DRO with 713 minus the 630, 83 thousandths we need to go. Six thirty-seven. So we got about seven more thousandths to go. Okay. While we're right here, we'll go ahead and put a little lead in for our thread. <clears throat> Pretty heavy uh, tamper on this. And we'll also take a parting tool and 
and cut a little thread relief. All right, so we got us a workpiece uh, prepared here. I'm going to put the change gears in now. We're going to be uh, uh, cutting a two millimeter pitch. This is a 16 by two. So I'm going to put the change gears in over here. And the procedure for putting the change gears in for metric threads is identical to what you saw in the first part of this series of change gears for imperial threads. So I'll get that and come right back. Okay, if you recall from previous videos, uh, I showed how to determine what the dial on your compound should, should read, how much you should advance it in for external threads or pull it back toward you for internal threads. We used a constant of 750. And we simply divided 750 by the threads per inch, uh, such as if we were uh, cutting an 18 thread per inch, we divide 750 by 18. And that is what, that's the number that we should advance the compound to. <clears throat> With metric threading, we got to do a little bit more math. Now we all know this 25.4 millimeters to the inch. 25.4 millimeters per inch. So let's convert our metric pitch into an equivalent threads per inch. So if we divide 25.4 by the metric pitch, in this case we're going to go to 2, we're going to get 12.7. Now note these parentheses here in your math. You need to make this division first. Don't divide 750 by 25.4 and then divide that by the metric pitch. Divide 25.4 by your pitch. So in this case, 750 divided by 25.4 divided by 2 gives us 750 divided by 12.7. Means that our compound down here should advance to 59 thousandths. And as I do quite often, I'll put that 59 right here, just as a reminder. Now, everything else about cutting the threads is the same. I set my uh, quick change tool post at 29 and a half degrees to the compound. Then I squared the compound up on the workpiece. So, all this is the same. We're still cutting 60 degree threads on our uh, for metric. I've got the change gears in. What we want to do next is come over here, just like we've done before, get our cross slide handle at the bottom. I just like to have a easy place to come back to so we'll set that dial to zero now we'll bring this in until it's just touching all right and we'll set this dial to zero right here This is what we're going to advance in 59 thousandths. So I hope, uh, hope you picked up that part on how that uh, was calculated. Now the only other thing we're going to do different, cutting metric threads than imperial. If you recall cutting imperial threads, we would engage our half nuts down here on a number, on the threading dial. Uh, in the case of this lathe, I can use any number one through four for any of the imperial threads per inch that it'll cut. What we're going to do different, or when we're cutting imperial, once we got to the end of our threads, we would disengage the half nuts, back the cross slide out, manually roll it back, put the cross slide back to its zero, and advance the compound. Where the imperial threads differ, since we have an, 
an imperial leaf screw on here uh, and we're cutting metric threads, we're going to lock the half nuts down here, down here where my right hand is, we're going to lock that into one number and leave it there. Now, what I like to do, just as a reminder to myself, is to come down here and tie a rag, a plastic bag, or something over this handle. Just to remind me, if I get involved in what I do and I reach for that, no, I don't disengage here. So to give you an idea of what we're going to do, I'm going to turn the lathe on. When it gets around to a number down here, I'm going to engage it. That's immediately going to start the carriage traveling. Once it gets to here, I'm going to turn the lathe off. I'm going to disconnect power to the lathe. I'm going to back off the compound or cross slide. I'm going to back it off. Going to reverse the lathe, turn power back on. That will move this back over here. I'll stop. I'll put the cross slide back into position and I'll advance the compound. Hit the power and we'll come back in again. All right, I think I've got everything set up. All right, now remember just as soon as I engage this, this is going to start moving. All right, I've advanced this uh, five thousandths. Looks like a reasonable speed. That's around 200 RPM. I've got my finger on the off button over here. All right, I switched it off. I'm going to back the cross slide up, put the lathe in reverse, and back up. All right, I've stopped the lathe. I'll put the lathe back in forward. I'll bring the cross slide back to zero, its home position, and advance the compound another five thousandths. Get a little bit of oil and put on. Now when I power on the lathe, of course it's going to start immediately feeding in. Lathe in reverse. Back the cross slide up. Power, back and forward, back to home position here, and advance another five thousandths. Now I'm going to continue this process until we get uh, close to that 59 on this dial. And just like cutting imperial threads, occasionally I want to make a pass and not advance the compound just to take care of any spring that might be going on. Let me pause right here for just a second. I know there are several videos out on YouTube now. Tom Lipton has one from a few years ago where he is disengaging the half nuts, cutting metric threads. And you can do that. You can disengage when you get in there, but you immediately got to shut your machine off just like we did before. Back the compound, back the cross slide up, put the lathe in reverse, and when it comes back around to your number down here, going in reverse, you engage the half nut again. That's a fine way to do it. But the way I'm doing right here, I only have to remember one thing, and that's kill power. So we're back and forward now. I don't recall if I advanced this yet. It doesn't matter. I'll make a spring pass. Now 
and evidently I had. All right, that's 55 on our compound dial right now. We should be getting close. As you can see, it'll start on there, but really won't go any further. So let's advance on to our 59 right here. 59 being what we calculated. Put this back to the home position. I'm going to make a spring pass on this without advancing the compound. Doesn't matter how far back you care this just as long as you leave the half nut engaged. All right, let's see if we're going to have to shave just a little bit more. Yep, we're going to need to take just another couple of thousandths. That 59 is, of course, your starting point. We're going to go about three more thousandths here. Let's see, we need to get this back to the home position. Then we'll make a spring pass on that. And look at there. We'll cut a metric thread on an imperial lathe. 16 millimeter by 2 millimeter pitch. Okay, if any of you are thinking that uh, I kind of oversimplified this uh, cutting metric thread, you probably need to go back and watch the previous videos uh, on external and internal threading. Uh, for, for imperial threads. In those videos, I demonstrated to a great, de great deal of detail of how to set up the compound at the correct angle. Uh, we talked about uh, depth, double depth of thread, and, and several other things that I didn't see any need of repeating in this video. This video was primarily two things. One, showing you how you need to keep the half nuts locked in. When you get to the end of your thread, power the lathe off, back the cross slide up, put the lathe in reverse, move it back, put the uh, cross slide back to its zero position, put the lathe back in forward, advance the compound, four or five thousandths, maybe six thousandths, Cut your next, make your next cut, and just keep repeating that. That was the, the first thing I wanted you to uh, fully understand about cutting metric threads on, a, in, on an imperial lathe. The second thing is, or was, how much to advance your compound. In that, again, we saw the formula. You take the 25.4, which is how many millimeters is in an inch. 25.4 and divide it by whatever your metric pitch is. In this case, it was two. It could have been 1.25, it could have been 1.5, could have been three. Whatever your metric pitch is, divide 25.4 by that value. Now, once you got that answer, 
divide the constant 750 by what you got when you did the 25.4 divided by the pitch math. That way, that'll get you within a couple of thousandths, two or three thousandths of how far to advance your compound. In this case, uh, it figured out to 59, I advanced it to 62. Three more thousandths, and that was primarily just cleaning up uh, the bottom of those threads. We started with a 16-2 nut and a piece of old crowbar or pry bar. And we've got us a nice metric thread on there. Now, I'm not going to do a video at this time. I'm not planning on doing a video of doing internal uh, metric threads because it's the exact same process. All you do is set the compound around at 29 and a half degrees on the other side of zero and feed out on your compound instead of feeding in. But I do plan to do mo one more video. Uh, got right much interest in the video uh, on matching non-nominal threads. So what I want to do on that is use a, another tip that came from that same Joe Pye, Joe Pysinski's video on uh, uh, matching uh, a borehole to whatever size thread you want or vice versa. Uh, basically what it was was taking a fractional value of your uh, threads per inch and subtracting that or adding to your uh, diameter that you me your measured diameter. He also showed or said in that video he didn't he didn't actually show this. This is why I'm kind of following up on this on what he said. But he also told of uh, how to do it with metric, which is even more simpler. So come back next week. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, and I'll see you on that next video.